In the last two videos, we learned what Bitcoin's blockchain is and how we can build a consensus algorithm on top of it using proof of work. Now, you may be wondering, can we just forget everything that we've learned in the past about really complicated consensus algorithms and instead just use a blockchain consensus to solve all of our consensus problems? Are Bitcoin's proof of work and Ethereum's proof of stake just better than the classical algorithms like Paxos, Raft, or even Byzantine fault tolerance solutions like PBFT? No, they're not actually better. And that's because cryptocurrencies are actually really weird. They're weird because they're trying to solve a political problem of distributing trust amongst a bunch of computers and a bunch of users. And in order to achieve that, they need to create what's called a public blockchain. A public blockchain is where computers and users can join and leave your Bitcoin network at any time. And it sort of is based on the assumption that the majority of the people joining are going to be good users who actually want the system to succeed. And they'll vastly outnumber the number of evil users who are trying to make the system break or fail in some way. And because of this, the Bitcoin blockchain has to use some fairly complicated algorithms that also require there to be a large number of users and a large number of computers in order to get the security guarantees you want for the system to succeed. On the other hand, if you're trying to build a system that's merely just really reliable and a really good solid system, and you don't care about these goals of distributing trust, then you could just take instead of thousands of computers for something like a Bitcoin blockchain, you would have maybe five computers, or if you're really paranoid, seven computers, which you control, you set up, you make sure they're really reliable, and then they replicate your data across them using Paxos, Raft, or PBFT. And because of this, a system such as Paxos-based system can be way more efficient than a Bitcoin system. So maybe that's enough to convince you that a blockchain consensus really isn't the way to go for your application. Or maybe you need more convincing to avoid using one of the classic algorithms like Paxos, Raft, or PBFT. So let's compare those two classes of algorithms. The blockchain consensus algorithms, such as Bitcoin's proof of work or Ethereum's proof of stake, and the classic consensus algorithms, which I'll put in another bucket of Paxos, Raft, and PBFT. Let's start by looking at performance and see how these two perform. And when you're looking at performance, we'll start with throughput. So a Paxos instance could easily be set up to handle a thousand transactions per second, or even more. And the way you do this is relatively easy. You set up your system so that it can handle one Paxos round per second. And in each of those Paxos rounds, you commit a thousand transactions. Done. And really, one Paxos round a second is not that fast, since the rate limit on your Paxos algorithm is how fast can you copy the data between the five computers, and how quickly can you write it to disk. And disks are pretty fast. Bitcoin, on the other hand, can do somewhere between three and seven transactions per second. And this limit is actually enforced by the Bitcoin algorithm. If someone adds a whole bunch of computers to the Bitcoin network in an attempt to speed it up, well, then the Bitcoin algorithm will recognize, oh my gosh, I'm going too fast. And the next time it recomputes the difficulty of its proof of work problem, it'll make it harder and slow the system down again until it's back at three to seven transactions per second. And you might ask yourself, well, gosh, uh, that's really slow if you compare Bitcoin to Paxos. Surely we could just tweak the Bitcoin algorithm and make it go faster. And there actually are some really good ideas for tweaks to the algorithm. Bitcoin NG is a paper that lists a whole bunch of tweaks that can make the system go much faster, like an order of magnitude faster easily. But the downside of these tweaks is twofold. The first challenge you have is getting Bitcoin NG or any algorithm tweak accepted by the existing Bitcoin community because it's a political challenge because Bitcoin is almost as much a political system as it is a technical solution to the cryptocurrency problem. The second challenge you find is that Bitcoin NG is more complicated than the original Bitcoin algorithm. And complexity is a challenge in itself because who wants their system to be complicated and fail or succeed in more complicated ways. It's just not a good thing. So we can clearly see that Bitcoin is much slower than Paxos, but how about Raft or PBFT? 
Well, it turns out that Paxos, Raft, and PBFT are roughly the same performance, and so I'm just going to compare Bitcoin to Paxos from now on and ignore those other two algorithms because they're all roughly in the same ballpark. So we've talked about throughput. So now let's talk about latency, or how long does it take between when your application writes some data into your consensus system, and your consensus system comes back and says, okay, we've recorded your data, it's in consensus across all the computers, and it is durable, it's never gonna go away. Well, once again, it doesn't look so good for Bitcoin. Paxos can do this in one round of the Paxos algorithm, under a second, it records it across all its computers, you're done. Bitcoin, on the other hand, you have to wait for the next block to be mined, and a block is mined every 10 minutes, so you could say you probably have to wait a on average 10 minutes before you even have a chance of having your data recorded. Assuming your data makes it into a block that gets mined, then you're not done. You can't return to the application and say your data is durable because that block might have been mined on a fork or a branch in the blockchain. And so you need to wait some more time to see if you're on a branch or if you're actually on the main blockchain. And typically the advice people give is you need to wait at least an hour so if you compare these two systems, the performance is 100 times lower throughput for Bitcoin versus Paxos and 3,600 times longer latency before your application can be sure its data is recorded. That's terrible. But if that doesn't convince you, let's go on and talk about energy usage. Now, energy usage is an interesting thing because it seems obvious if you just compare the two systems where Bitcoin's running on thousands of machines and Paxos is running on five machines, that Bitcoin will be a thousand times worse off in terms of how much energy it consumes, right? Well, actually, it's not that good. It is much, much worse. It's a familiar story by now, right? Paxos barely takes any time to commit a transaction. And as a result, it's using a small number of machines for a small period of time. It's barely consumes any electricity whatsoever on the order of milliwatts to get its job done. Bitcoin, on the other hand, has thousands of computers all competing with each other to be more wasteful of energy than their peers, and whoever's the most wasteful has the highest chances of mining a block and then getting the reward for that. It's almost as if they're competing to light money on fire to see who can burn the most money in order to mine a block, right? Hey, let's try that, see if it's fun. Let's light some money on fire. Hmm, burning money. Isn't that fun? I love to burn money. Don't you wish you could light your money on fire? Is this just Bitcoin's problem? Or is it a fundamental property of proof of work that it's going to consume vast amounts of energy? Well, Bitcoin NG allows you to do more transactions per mined block. So that actually reduces the number of orders of magnitude difference, but it's still pretty bad because you still have people competing to burn energy simply to get the honor of mining a block. On the other hand, if you look at Ethereum's proof of stake algorithm, it doesn't consume nearly as much energy, so it looks a lot better. Unfortunately, that only works if the application you're building is a cryptocurrency because proof of stake requires you to prove that you have more cryptocurrency than your peers in order to mine a block. And so I wouldn't recommend actually using proof of stake in other domains because it's not really clear it makes any sense. So far, we've established that proof of work consensus, such as the Bitcoin blockchain, is way slower than a Paxos based system, both in throughput and in latency. We've also established that it's way less energy efficient. But that's not all. It's also way more complicated in more than one way. For example, let's say you wanted to set up your own blockchain because you're creating a whizzy new application. Well, you need to convince the owners of thousands of good computers who aren't gonna mess with your system to join your network so that they can be there to outnumber any bad users which might join your blockchain. And so for this, you don't need a computer scientist. You need a cult leader. You need someone like a theologian or a political scientist who can convince people that joining your blockchain is the best thing they could do with their computers and all of that electricity they're gonna use. Next, you'll be on the bleeding edge of your compute system if you're using a blockchain-based system, which means that you're doing new and novel things, which is cool and fun, right? 
but it also means that you'll be coming up with new and novel ways of having security holes in your system. So you might want to hire a full-time security staff or even a cryptographer to review what you're doing to make sure that you're actually creating something that is robust. And cryptographers are kind of hard to hire these days because there aren't nearly enough of them for all of the demand. Finally, given how inefficient proof of work is, you need to bribe your users. You need to give them something in order to make it worth their while to spend all of that electricity trying to solve these silly block mining problems. And quite frankly, with Paxos, you don't need to bribe anyone because it's just so cheap and efficient for the people running these computers that they probably do it for free. In short, using a proof of work based consensus in most application domains is insane. Unless you're building a cryptocurrency, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to spend all of these extra compute resources creating a public blockchain. And yet, people are still really excited about blockchains. Why is that? Well, it's because people think they want a reliable database that's replicated between multiple organizations with an immutable transaction history, which actually would be a really cool thing to have. And the smart people have realized, well, you don't need a public blockchain to achieve that. We can do it with a private blockchain. Wait, what's a private blockchain? Well, if you just use Paxos, Raft, or PBFT to replicate your blockchain data structure from one computer to another, all of a sudden you have a blockchain replicated across your organizations, and you don't have all of these astounding overheads of proof of work or the need for a new currency in proof of stake. So this is great, right? So now I've created a system that's fast and efficient and yet retains the immutability and non-reputability characteristics of a blockchain, right? Well, their marketing would have you believe that. I'm actually not so convinced you get those properties without the proof of work, but I'd love to hear your opinions.